I'll just read two more. Thanks so much for listening. My father's mother, my Chinese grandmother, uh, gave me a Chinese name. And it sounded something like Ben Bon. And as the custom is, she put an awe at the end when she said it. So it sounded something like Ben Don Ah. And I wrote this poem to um, pay tribute to that awe sound. It's called Inventory. And much of the imagery here comes from the corner store that I grew up in. The awe was more song beyond the name. If the name were river, the awe flooded its banks. Nonetheless, in its song, the awe signed the air, made the air mean. The awe hitched and hinged its intimacy, jaw dropped. It's diminutive, saying of class, filling a back kitchen at lunch where a walk clangs and a knife trims the gristle. In the stockroom with her, it kept accounts, was ledger, an idea of order among Schlitz and old Milwaukee. From tones in the pharynx, from lungs that hung like two clipboards, came the awe's inventory. She tied the awe to my name, like that old trick tongue-tying cherry stem. Kui poo or rosary and the knot was knowing. She threaded the eye to sew a threnody, liturgy the way she sang the vow amid the till bell, a field song over produce, a gnaw, a nope, or uh-oh, it was abracadabra, an end note, a colophon, bearing the binder's mark. It lingered incarnate in the cold walk-in and ghosted the stocked aisles where I stood over cans of Ajax and Green Giant. The awe was wavelength, a frequency shape like a mountain range. It was the gesture's aura, and like a varnish, it looked my name and diminished like a mark in the margin. It was Whistle House, a star's spur, and it could scold from the meat counter where she priced the chuck with a grease pen tied to the scale. In her long breath, the awe was money to burn, incense in a Folgers can, in the ear, as if in a mirror, I found myself listening, and like all language, it was a grave's treats, singing of separateness and tracing something complete. Though not on a map, its lilt echoed the geographies, and she hummed it simply over a thin broth, simmered day long and suckled on a short rib. And I'll close with this poem. Thanks again. This is called Transmitter. In Judy Vaca's mural, The Great Wall, a Chichimeca woman on a comet tail of field corn hovers and whispers in the ear of Edison, the Zacatecan, the secrets of the light bulb. Orale, my mom texts, but autocorrect sends. As a kid, looking up from the passenger seat at the work badge my grandmother, after each shift, clipped to the rear view mirror's wood bead rosary. A dashboard in the dial light of her Chevy, its tooth clasp bit into the Hail Mary's 
as if to test the solder of that circuitry. She often tells me of Mexican movie stars, Maria Felix, Jose Negrete, Pedro Infante, how they toured the U.S. movie houses and signed the ticket stubs she sold from a box office skinny as a phone booth. A transmitter made from gold beater's skin stretched across a hoop drum, a phonograph used pig brittle for a stylus to sign his speech waves on a plate of smoked glass. I watched on YouTube Infante stand with 11 mariachis, gallant in silk ties and epaulets, to serenade Paloma, his tenor pruning about the unrequited man turned dove with grief to the actress in bedclothes and bewitched, as I imagine Hemholtz, the pianist, holding a tuning fork to an electromagnet and hearing it vibrate. Trying to picture that man wasting away in heartache and so hollowed to bird bones, I reread this morning Socrates telling Phaedrus outside the city walls of cicadas how they were men before muses brought them song. Unaware of that cost, I climbed mesquite limbs for the discarded skins, brittle as chicharrones, and cup their matchlight in my boy's hands. Hearing, it said, is touch at a distance. Ola is amp and trough. Frequency equals waves passing a given point. My nana's voice is creosote and parliaments tenor and rasp that sidewinds cell towers over chevrons of acotillo through ironwood and arroyo, moving in the megahertz her hands made. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brandon. That was great. The uh, noisemakers have held off for a little bit. It's nice. Um, there are some yellow flyers over there on the table that you might want to take um, one. And uh, it tells you what's happening in the next few weeks with the Poetry Center. And we'll be hosting the Lebanese poet Zena Hashem Beck and Iranian-American poet Farnes Fatemi next Wednesday. Um, all our three events through the rest of October are out on the San Francisco State Campus at, at the Poetry Center building, but they're also live streamed. And um, so you can attend or you can tune in later as well. A um, number of good things coming up and then we'll announce our November events very soon. It's been just a total pleasure having Ari Banyas here for this week. And um, we had thought to um, invite them as Maza writer in residence back when he was living in the Bay Area. And then um, circumstances brought him to Chicago. And so we're really happy that we ha had the resources and Ari was able to um, make this time for us this week. And so it's been you know, just really um, wonderful poet and and thinker of poetry and thinker of, of of the ways in which poetry works in the world, and and it's just you know been an absolute joy. So um, delighted to introduce him. The um, Ari is the author of, of of two books. The most recent is Asymmetry. Um, which won the 2021 Publishing Triangle Award for Trans and Gender Variant Literature. And preceding that was Anybody. Um, and both of those books are from W.W. W. Norton. 
You can find um, recent work in, in Beast, in Georgia Review, Hyperallergic, The Nation, The New Republic, Triple Canopy, Verse, Washington Square, The Yale Review, and Ari, as I just mentioned, is coming to us from Chicago. So, Ari Banias. Hi. Um, thank you so much, Steve. And, um, and thank you so much, Brandon, for that um, just gorgeous, gorgeous reading. Uh, I, I feel very lucky to share this uh, podium with you and, um, and to be here with everybody here today. Um, the, this week has been really beautiful. Um, I want to thank um, before I read, I want to thank everyone at the Poetry Center, um, everybody who is making this reading possible um, with your labor, and to Steve um, for bringing me here as the Maza writer in residence. Um, I want to thank Medicine for Nightmares, um, Tan and Josiah, and um, it's just, um, it's always a real privilege to be able to share my work and um, to be able to read it in person, um, which I have really missed doing. So I'm going to read um, from Asymmetry. Um, I'm going to read some a shorter poem, and then I may, I, I'm, I think I'm going to read something longer since uh, we have a bit of time. Uh, when you said Oracle, Brandon, uh, <laughs> the autocorrect. I, I laughed to myself because that's the name of the first poem I'm going to read. Um, Oracle. I was wrong. It isn't suffering that's easy, pleasure that's difficult. How is it I've been living this way, holding my piss? A mirror scuffed by distant talk, secretly livid, worried what the dead would think? Someone greets with only the top half of her head, brown curly hair behind a computer monitor. Today, for one second, a woman is anyone who has a body and can't forget it. The tight loops of the office carpet start to unhook. Some men are women, too. The way a mountain is land and a harbor is land and a parking lot. Refuse the difference between sameness and difference. The ocean is on fire. Green flame on the neck of a god who is a pile of rocks, not apologizing for themselves. And I was thinking that um, when when you had that sound trouble before with the um, wiring, it was kind of amazing um, the correspondence between what you were reading and the sort of like, like it's the ancestors, it's the ghost in the machine, you know. Um, um, so this is a poem that almost went in the book and didn't. So I'm going to read it. Somebody reminded me of it recently, um, Tati, uh, when they were introducing um, my reading at uh, the gallery last Thursday. Tribute. Home now, I examine the nose down, fly on my floorboards, the fine hairs on its legs, a broken umbrella unfolding. What passes through the keyhole of a look? twist of your ribcage as you turn to me, debts you're saddled with and debts you ride. We try to keep the radiant capsule buried. We try not speaking. The lake we watch over watches back. You show me photos of water and we get caught on the surface. It calls us up quick as champagne, as weightless. I give you a stone, you shine in your mouth like a plum. Taped above your desk, 
a quote about voguing I photograph while you're at work so I can be with it later. For when we are no longer ashamed of ourselves, is that now? We will be free to imagine an order of our own. The stone you give me sits at the deepest point of my pocket. Our skins touch, the stones and mine. From nine floors up, the lake's ethereal green gown refuses to end, but we know it has edges. Now surround my hand entirely, sweetly crowd me. When the creditors call, I answer and tell them about my debts to your mind. The dark reds of the carpet, the sun rings pink and other forms of adoration. Blue underglow on the fly's body or a blues from an adjacent room. So this, um, this poem is, I'm going to read from the second section of this book, and this book has four sections, and the second and fourth are long poems. Um, and um, I don't usually get an opportunity to read a poem this long at a reading, um, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> and um, this poem is called Spectra. It's in sections. The sections aren't numbered. There's... Um, no sort of demarcation of them, but um, I'm just going to sort of pause between them. And we will be in California and in Greece and in the Northeast. Spectra. Fake real estate, real airspace where a hummingbird swerves at my red watch cap. Not a flower. My eyes, mouth, face, a conceptual flower, a breach in emotional security. Time waged against a living wage after a decade. $15 an hour is not my subject position, your subject position in the ahistorical grassland financial district stripped of industrial zone where no one lives seaside village where no one lives the subjective field near the mountain where the gods make their decisions where my friend visits each spring to gather herbs to make medicines against the state to practice this medicine privacy piracy she is there now gathering, accepting money from the rich, the water ruffles, keeping their boats afloat, sucking down fuel. Nothing comes down to touch you, just have to know it's there. Person in the bed of a truck looking out to the leafless trees, a long stubborn line of survivors, you need the will to help each other continue. You need knowing how to fix an engine, a skill for sweet talk. Oh, have a question. Is elegy pure mourning or is there room for the shit things he did that you were forced and that so much of forcing does not appear? A hot plate for dinner and somewhere to sit. Two colors of blue, pull back and what remains, what you put up with for somewhere to sit. Climate controlled corporate headquarters, UV blocking suicide proof windows. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. The M in monarch plumbing and heating wears a tilted crown. A green flower-shaped boat on the Mayflower shipping container. Across from the Nashua River, not eternal. A Wendy's and a Coles, not eternal. The itchy desolation of spring surrounds the battered safety cone holding its shape. Frost's mending wall, a sign for manifest builders. Once pain was quiet, now it instructs me. 
The wind took the almond tree, the outer door, the satellite dish. She squints at the brilliant water, repeats a story she already told. A hand closes two sets of blue shutters against day. She admits she's depressed. Terracotta tiles rest in their formal sequence. Build a home where no amount of money could ever protect you. The blameless salt, the raving sea, Athena's temple, scaffold covered wreck, weeds with such roots no person can pull. To throw a rough and glittering stone into the sea and forget its in. Everyone young can leaves for the city. A Volos cousin bought an olive grove to run a paintball field. He props old doors against the trees for cover. If it hurts to be struck, he doesn't say. The uncle, farmhands, aunt, all look like men. The cafe's full, meticulous, gelled hair. Everyone smokes. Flushed octopus hang drying. The truth is not cliche isn't true. Dad sends a pic of an olive tree 400 years old. It looks like any tree. The highest branches silver as they were. An ancient wall runs obscured by grass along the top of that hill. Someone in a red skirt methodically beats the trees. A stick looks like any stick. People, other people point out the path. To want to dissolve and be anything. Crabgrass, Panera bread, transmission fluid leaked onto a parking spot, compressed aluminum sheeting, new toilet in a flipped house. That old guy's tan baseball hat with machine embroidered American flag on it. Even that? Well... Half exposed in a cheerful email, a half clandestine of underpaid workers, a cruelty of temperature and color, ice queen and heat. See iridescent motor oil on asphalt, think unicorn piss. Planet Earth at the end of a keychain, Danny put down his pants and handed over a literalist, a little lamb. Gay people not near gay people are gay. Unpaid mandatory lunch breaks. An ancient temple to the wind god discovered under a supermarket. I leave the word discovered to let the pattern speak. I am listening, the apologizers now say. The judge wears a more ornate collar ruffle to signify disagreement. Decorum suggests the ruffle. Decorum doesn't want you feeling free. People not here rush into the public squares. People in group therapy trade off yelling at an empty chair. To speak without vulnerability you claimed impossible. The land's fragrance, its honey, its plants. Translation. I wanted to be back in my language. Back? I wanted to differently be in another word for being. Ine, ime, estar. Small brown moth frazzling the window pane. Another way to live in the rind living had shed. Where someone spray painted, Athens is the new Berlin. The retort follows, Berlin is the new Athens, on a billboard for instant coffee above the cafe in the ardent sun. Go ahead, wish for it. A creek running under the building, that's in Berkeley, makes the wall sweat. The weed bro next door exhales directly into my apartment, whose cheap rent is triple what Greek friends already can't afford. 
they scan the room and slam the door. Of his housekeeper, the American poet wrote, like a Palmyra matron copied in lard and horsehair. That was James Merrill. Of everyone in language school, I had the most believable accent. I can pretend to read coffee grounds in lurching fragments. Should I worry about this feeling? Blithe vacation photos in my feed of a person who'd emailed asking for interesting things to do in Athens. You're a stray dog. You don't know where you're from. We had the whole cove to ourselves. Tourism is to drink from one's cut. Then again, it depends where you were in the 70s. Your relationship to polyester blends, dictatorship, interminable cues, hospitality, the phrase exhausted blue, tar deposits on beaches. Someone wheels an empty wheelbarrow past windows where two women fold sheets. In yellowish light, the white sheets make shapes in the window as they work. Triangle, rectangle, square, shapes I'm hungry for. Someone walks the other way without the wheelbarrow. The sheets in a sizable heap at one end of the long table, table their arms pass over. I want to resist a comparison to healers, but this is how their hands move as they open, then fold something away as they tend to it. She takes two corners taut and shakes it down in one crisp move, lays it on the table where it settles in time, brings the other two corners to the first to make the sheet disappear. Only one person folding now, behind three large windows and a tall white fan, which is off. I describe the shape of a plot of land, how its ve vegetation stirs in varying wind, the detritus gathered at the foot of the fence, little garbage froth, the day's color, a building's texture, a fixed point in a landscape intimately, but not the menace of a man with outrageous pants praising a former head of state, his relation by marriage. Oh, love, how do I find the love of what is unloved in this man? Or whose job is this? Mine? At 4 a.m., the night bird's calling. 18, 18, 18. In translation, the syllables for the number sound stingy. Rationalism, reason, it's off-season scaffolds, it's bleed edge. Imagine the whole country is a museum, every little stone, imperial. Pictures of food bigger than the actual food. On loan as a favor, a tourist fingers and considers a green piece of sea glass with interest, then tosses it back. From a Heineken, you or I could have chugged in the 90s, smooth as a use ass. It hurts to smack into genre, willingly maintained. Linty remnant in the research funding, compliant complaint. The project of attention being a large percentage of looking away from. I'm to, make, I'm to remain rare by becoming example. For example, the hall without windows or air I come to feel comfortable in, then come to. Theoretically sorry as the window a bird takes for sky and unattainable as a corner office if I refuse to perforate or divide. You like the smell of the air here. It feels right. 
What a thing to say. My body said it. Air traveling in and out of the lungs. Old people are visible here. It feels right. Tangible as wool when shepherds are not abstract. Events mediated through a screen. If it's visible on screen, that's not your body. Visible in the coffee grounds if it's the future. If it is, it smells like the room right before she sees what their rifle butts have done. There's no word for events, just life as it shrinks, enlarging, one gold coin, and then it's spent. A train horn in the distance sounding mournful, frantic, or resigned, like someone at the end of the day saying, ach, panagiamu, unrolling the stockings from her legs for the 25,000th time. Nice. There we go. Okay. I'm going to read this really strange poem that just kind of like arrived, um, <laughs> came out of me kind of with, without explanation and I just sort of trusted it. And it's about um, being multilingual and one of those languages being English. Three tongues. The first one died, licking sand, thinking of the sea, split in three. The first a weed resembling whoever's nearest, its medicines camouflaged in mimesis. The second was a bankrupt study abroad program with a sentimental little nationalist streak, a Doric column squatting in a strip mall the fragrant mountain ringed in cast off first world nouns, that it was written, that it is understood. But how to describe the third? The taste of water, paradox? The third is using my desire to save from the force of desire, a turquoise burro meant for smashing, I mean to hold a word that looks at you as if it knows you and you feel warm. The room you back into while staring directly at a light source. So now you twitch without hearing the command to twitch. And I think I'll maybe read one or two more. We don't drive to the sea, but we talk about the sea. Rain laid into my grimy window pane at an angle, a cocky guy against a car waiting, waiting. To watch water magnify the screen's perfect squares, then extinguish like office, like lights in an office building after hours when cleaning crews come in and leave. From my desk, I study it where I take my little peasant meal, poached egg, brown bread, white cheese, grapefruit juice, brief and dense. A peasant meal, though the bread was $7, the eggs too, and purchased while in the luxury of a bad mood. No peasants write poems, some asshole says, and that asshole is me. If one notion follows another, the sense I make will break itself against itself. 
Round white petals on the street, I think are shattered glass. I steer around while they flutter, then go still. A baby carrot in a bag of baby carrots, nuzzled and shaved down into this wet shape. Why? So it could be forgotten, so it wouldn't have to be itself. Who wants to read about flower petals? Who wants to read about all the theory you've read? This blessed juice is sour and real. I think I'll end there. Um, thank you so much for being here. And um, yeah. <laughs> about to remark how the world had been so quiet. It had been stunningly quiet there for a long time. <laughs> um, we left a little space in case anybody wants to bring um, questions or comments to Ari or Brandon or both of them, and, and maybe you two have something to say to one another. I don't know. <laughs> maybe we all have something to say to the man in the street. You're welcome to, um, d does anybody from the audience want to um, raise, raise anything? We're also ready to just settle into private conversations or more private conversations in public. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>